Welcome to Title Talk with your host, Drew Wishover, entrepreneur, a published author, and owner of Inspired Title Group, along with his co host and CEO, Amy Maley. Each week, they offer you some laughs, industry terminology, tips and strategies, along with the occasional real estate professional to help educate you as it pertains to buying, selling, or just plain old homeownership. Thanks for spending time with them. Now, let's jump into today's episode of Title Talk. Well, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You guys, we're live. You're here. We're here. We're here. You're You're here. here. You are here, too. You're not supposed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here. And we're not supposed to be here. And this is not supposed to be happening. <laughs> but we're here for you, and we're so excited to be here. Well, yes. you might not be as I'm excited. I'm not as excited. I'm, I'm supposed sorry. to be in Las Vegas, Nevada. You are I should to. not be here, but I'm dedicated. We're here. We love Southwest. We love flying. <laughs> so, I yes, uh, let me, a quick little story. I'm supposed to be in Las Vegas doing a Nationals bowling tournament. However, after 18, 16, 18 hours in an airport with uh, the Southwest delays and things, it uh, kind of put a little uh, damper on the trip. So, therefore, I decided to come back to work. And he decided to do a title talk. You could have backed out of this easily, but we appreciate you, you know, Brittany loved that yesterday at 4.30 you came up with this brilliant idea for Title Talk because right. you had to put together the backdrop oh, yeah. and like Just wanted to challenge hour, Brittany's skill and all. And, and it's looking pretty look, good. Look what she did. She created a backdrop in twenty less than 24 hours. Good she job. put together a wonderful show here. And uh, we slapped together our typical things that we do through the course of yeah. the day. And had to do our quick research and content because we are dedicated to you, the listener. The listener. The listener. <laughs> if you're wondering who we are, we are Inspired Title Group. I'm Drew. And I'm Amy. And we are your friendly title company, the title company that cares, the title company that gives back, the title company of the future, the title company of the ages. We your got neighborhood a lot friendly title company. Of adages that go with <laughs> us. So we're proud of all of those things. But uh, we are most proud of having you guys as our, our viewers and listeners and our uh, loyal loyal members and customers. our usual listeners are all on vacation right now. Isn't that crazy? I know. So now we're gonna see who really digs us. I know. We have Courtney that usually joins. Courtney's on vacation. Carol's, Carol's on, vacation. on vacation. And we're here. But we're here. Yes. <laughs> You're yes, not I on am. vacation. I'm not on vacation. We should have we really should have the Las Vegas backdrop on this. I see. See, I come up with these ideas. Just at the at the hey, tenth hour. Can you make that happen? Right, I'm just kidding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Could you switch us into a quick little Paris hotel? <laughs> Why don't we go into what we are talking about in the world of title and the industry, the professionals mm-hmm. that we like to bring yeah. on, and and just give you guys some more knowledge on a little bit more. Like last week, we talked about uh, the market and what was going on in the For marketplace. Sure. So I think this week we we kind of slapped together some thoughts and ideas about the title industry, and maybe telling some title stories. Yeah. So you got a title story that you'd sure. like to so, share with us? So when Drew first said title story, I was like, the good, the bad, the ugly? Like, right. what, what are we talking about? Because in title, there is all of that. There is, you know, some of his stories. One of his stories is going to be funny. Um, but mine are not funny, because I'm not funny. <laughs> um, so <laughs> oh, no, Aim, You're funny. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to talk about is just kind of the – the overview of a title examiner and, and the things that I've seen. Is that what you do? Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. How long? I've been doing it for a, quite a while now. You have. Um, you have so definitely. one of the things that I will tell you about title insurance is that it's never the same thing. And if you like a job that's repetition, then never try to get a job being a title examiner. Yeah. Because you think that you're getting a hang of it. You think that everything is like you're cruising, you're cooking, you're getting it. And then all of a sudden you're like, what is a leasehold interest? Which is something that we're dealing, I'm dealing with for the first time in, you know, the last couple of years. And I had no idea what that was or right. what, and right. now, you know, talk to my, talk to my boss and he actually has, he actually knows what it is. Just kidding. <laughs> um, so he gave me an insight into that. I'm not going to talk about leasehold interest because it's kind of boring. Mm-hmm. What I am going to talk about is um, pin numbers and like how, what? Pin numbers. You love that. I did it just for you. I so know. Pro- pin, it's a pin is a property index number. Right. So that's why he cringed when I said right. pin number. Um, but it's common. It's a common term in today's in today's world. It is. Sure. Yeah. And, and what are they? So every 
um, lot has a designated number. And that designated number is what we use as our first step in running your title search. So that is the number we use to pull your taxes, to pull up any open mortgages, liens, deeds that will show up on your title. What happens when the lovely Cook County accidentally indexes your mortgage under the wrong place? Yeah, which happens. Which happens more more so now, I think, than I used to see. Well, and I, and, and I think part of that, too, is because of the, and yeah, and the volume, the backup that they mm -hmm. had, that, you know, that everything was they kind were, of on hold. And, and so we, oof. we do something, uh, when we run titles, there's something that's called an effective date. Correct. So usually it's about a month behind. Like, that's kind of mm -hmm. a standard for Cook County. Um, like, DuPage will, they're usually a couple weeks. But during COVID, there was a backup so bad that the effective date was October, even in May, May April. Right. Right. So that's like, that was like a huge problem when it came to running our titles, issuing policies, and all that okay. stuff. Um, sorry, I'm I'm going I'm going no, all okay. over the place right now because okay. there's a lot. I'm it's gonna segue back to my pin. <laughs> it's even hard for you to Not say, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, pin without the number. So one of the one of the things that has been happening more so recently than it used to is is properties that have two pins, mm -hmm. um, because each lot has its own individual number. There's some houses that were actually either built on two lots or they were built on one lot with a garage next door or a vacant lot next door. And I've seen a couple like titles that came through, title orders that came through, only listing one pin, mm -hmm. which is a huge problem because we're actually dealing with that one now that's closing tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, where a person lived in the house and they paid all their taxes on the lot their house actually was on, but the one next door, which was where the garage was, none of the taxes were paid for the last five or six years. So a tax buyer had paid all those taxes, which means that legally they are entitled. In, to thank you. That's where entitled to that to that property. Right. Um, so Those then there has been you know back and forth with our attorneys talking to the tax buyer, seeing what they could negotiate buying that property back for. So. If you live on a bigger lot, I would suggest taking a look or talking to your title company to learn if it's actually on two lots, or if those also happens, that these two lots can get merged into one lot. Definitely. So um, just something to keep in mind. When I first started doing titles, um, you always said the key for this is when you see a legal description that starts with like lot 19 and 20, mm -hmm. always make sure you check both the pins to make right. sure Either they were combined and they have a new pin, or you have two separate lots with two sets of taxes, two sets of searches. Because um, when liens get filed and stuff, it might be on one pin, not the right. other pin. So that's kind of my uh, and, a and little lo friend, friendly thing to keep watching. Lot is a synonym for parcel as yes. well, because you'll also hear the term parcel be used. So when Amy is talking about a pin attaching to a lot, it's also a pin attaching to a parcel, which is a parcel of land. And as she indicated well, that a legal description could read lots 9 and 10 and have one pin. Mm -hmm. But it also could be lot 9 and 10 and have two pins. It just really is something that the examiner and the, the title examiner, and that's a, a, a big key component in what a title company does, is examine the title uh, de determining what's been going on in that in that whole history of that parcel, and it gets really scary when Drew says the the word I hate hearing more than any word I've ever heard in my life. Sidwell, <laughs> <laughs> when he goes like if we're reading a legal description and there's a question true. about like where this lot actually is, what lot number it is, how big is the lot? He's like, oh, just grab the Sidwell, and I'm like, and the Sidwell is the <laughs> the old books that. The uh, they used to publish. They're freaking. They're like this fat. The binding on some of them is broken, and for some reason, I feel like right. every book, like it's always the book that has a broken binding. That I, I mean, need. until the the computer day and age. I mean, this is what we were able to reference for lot numbers and legal descriptions and lot sizes. Remember when I tried and, fixing that book oh, with the rubber bands? Yeah, it was, it was the waste. It was a waste. But of these books were were printed by a, a company. And they were called Sidwell books, which would reference every lot, 
everywhere, every parcel. And what they would do is they would put them out annually, so they would update them. I think there's nine volumes? Ten. There's ten, ten. volumes just mm-hmm. in Cook County, Cook County yep. alone. So Cook they, County. they would literally update these things every year based on new construction, new oh, subdivisions right. that were happening. So what you were able to do is you'd be able to go back the year before and go, that was a big vacant parcel. Yeah. Today, it's got... 40 lots in it. Yeah. Well, what happened? It gave you the history, but now with the day and age of computers, oh, yeah. you're it changes able to, everything. You know, yeah. But I don't think you can go back and see what it initially looked like. Right? It depends on the counties. Cook okay. County does not let you do that, but Correct. Will and DuPage have this option when you go to their GIS viewer, they um you can like click back what did it look like in 80, what did it look yeah. like. Okay. So that's okay. cool, but Cook County doesn't do that, so it's awesome that we still have those books to see like Definitely. what was this before it was what it is yep. now. Um, yeah, well, that's a that's a good story. It wasn't a really a little, story. It was just little a little thing that I yeah. yeah it's just information. some information that you guys of something that if you're ever in the title land. Should I save the good story for ending? Save, or? save the good one for okay. ending. All right. So I'm going to talk about then. My first story is going to be about um, three nightmares ultimately that your title insurance ultimately Night can prevent. Three nightmares. That nightmares. 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 What did I say? Nightmares. Nightmares. Milk, milk, milk. tomato, <laughs> he, tomato. He, he used the word milk the other day, and I almost threw up yes. in my mouth. Yes, it's really awesome. Milk. Really awesome. So really awesome. Don't there else. are big things that the the title insurance policy really protects you from, and and people just maybe don't understand or know why. What's the purpose behind it? What do, what do we need it for? Well, here are here are just a couple examples of, and we've talked about a lot of these throughout the time that we've been mm-hmm. doing this. But it, I guess it's you can never emphasize enough the importance and understanding because we see it every day that claims can happen and issues come up. So yep. we, we try to you know uh, aid you guys in, in giving you knowledge and understanding as to why you need it and, and what it does. Never purchase a home without an owner's policy. I agree. I agree. It's and not seven it's not worth it. It's not to try saving for the it. couple of dollars. So one big thing is errors in public records. I mean, as you were speaking, mm-hmm. if, if, the, if the counties and the jurisdictions that handle all of the recordings and things don't index these things correctly and a title examiner misses them, mm-hmm. that becomes an issue. Yeah. And, I mean, what would they miss? Oh, I don't know, a deed of conveyance? A mortgage? A mortgage, a like lien. A judgment? Right. Yeah, right. a so, lot. So basically a, a small clerical error that can ne- negatively impact the home buying process it can result in a significant financial loss. Okay, so yes, question. Can I ask a question? Of course. So if if a mortgage, if a lender puts the wrong pin on a mortgage, mm-hmm. so therefore it would mean it would more than likely get indexed under the wrong pin. Correct. Is that a lien that would come back to a title company or a lender, or should we still find? I mean, we probably would still find it by you know a name search or. Something of that sort. But do you know, like, mm-hmm. the path of what would happen if a mortgage is recorded under a wrong pin? So I think you know the answer to this, too, right? Maybe but, the universe does um, If the a mortgage is recorded on a, a the wrong pin, just because it's indexed somewhere else doesn't mean that it's not still valid, valid right. okay? So the validity of the mortgage is not what's in question. It's the posting of it. It's the making it public knowledge. And that's all that this indexing system that we talk about is. So, you know, part of what this process is, is indexing them into a space where they belong in accordance to the parcel of land that you own. If everything is not represented on that parcel, it doesn't mean it's not significant or still alive in the case of a mortgage, right? So, if we miss that mortgage of $100,000 because we didn't see it on our perfectly indexed world, that liability goes directly to the title company. Even though the lender pinned it, pinned it, pinned it wrong. Even though the lender put the wrong pin on. 100%. It's us 100%. still. And I, I did know the answer to that yeah. in case you're very worried yeah. about your life choices. But I just thought it... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks I for just, clarifying that. I just thought it'd be cool for the people to know that yeah. a title company does have a lot of responsibility. It is a for huge sure. job. It is... For sure. You know, every minute of every day, there's liabilities that we're trying to... Yeah, I mean, you know, the liability becomes, can we argue that they, you know, they put it in the wrong space and then... You can argue anything did. if you sure. really felt like but, it. But like, we've, like I've said to you guys and, and the rest of the team, the reality is you can sue anybody anytime for anything. Mm-hmm. There, I mean, it's 
the goal for us is to keep us out of any kind of lawsuit, any kind of claim process, because the moment you enter into it, all of the negative stigmas that come around it are with you. You and got a red flag. For nobody this wins in this. No. Nope. Because as much as you say that you're right, you that you still incur a cost to prove that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So right. We as your title company want to keep you guys out of harm's way, and that's why it's very important that Amy does her job in its entirety and and really puts out the detail and researches ahead of time so that she doesn't put you in harm's way. Because the reality is, is, is any mistake that Amy makes, you as the policyholder are going to be the sufferer. You know, you hold the consequence. Now, ultimately, we hold it, but you're going to still be dragged into this. For sure. So the importance of having a title company and the importance of having a title company who cares and gets it and understands the ramifications and of all of this. And a smaller title company. Right. And, like, we always, you know, beat the beat the dead horse about yeah. how we are a small title company, and that's nice. But when it comes to, like, claim situations, it will either be Drew who will answer it or I will because we're the only people who have really been doing titles over the last 15 Decade. years, mm-hmm. 10 years. Well, yeah, 20 years, yeah. Um, and his brain is like a sponge. Like if he hears a property address or something, mm-hmm. his brain can like transport back to where that was. Um, so it's a good thing that we haven't had like a super high turnover of worker rate where we know what right. the property is. One of us will know what and you're talking knock about. Knock on wood. I mean, that's something that we're proud of. We mm-hmm. don't, we haven't had any claims against us. That's not because we're small. That's not because of, I think that's because we, we take the time to do what we do. We've had we've had people come to us with a potential claim opportunity, mm-hmm. but we've been able to really deter that and step around it because we've been able to prove that it's we not did what valid. we were supposed to do. Everything, yeah. yeah, everything that we that you're claiming, we've we've represented. We've got the documentation to show it. So errors in the errors in the uh, public records is one of those items. That's okay. Uh, liens and judgments. This is something that I think you're going to talk about in your next oh, one. Leads and judgments yes, is another place that can get into a really awkward and uncomfortable spot. A judgment is nothing more than you lose a lawsuit and now you've got a judgment against you for fifty thousand dollars. Well, that's that's an issue. That's oh, that is that encumbers your ability to buy or sell a property. That's why they put the judgment on you. Mm-hmm. So they so they have a so right they to they, they're attached to you. Worse is if they attach it to the property because now you can't sell that property without dealing with that judgment that's sitting out there. Yep. And and so that's something else that we're here looking at and and protecting you guys against and, and looking at. And then invalid deeds and claims of ownership. This is scary. I, I guess I guess they really should have prioritized these and put that one. First. I was gonna say that of the three you mentioned is the scariest one to me. In in today's world, you've got a lot of estates. And you've got a lot of uh, trust, trust, issues, trust yes. and things, right? So people are, you know, if parents die and they leave the house to the kids and the kids are out of state, they don't want to deal with it. They don't want the headache. But there's several kids. So, you know, usually one is, is appointed the uh, executor. executor or executrix, if it's a lady, of that will or estate. And now what happens? Well, they left out that one brother that they haven't been in contact with for so many years, and just the three of them decided that this is what we're going to do, and now that one brother comes back and goes, hey, what about my interest? It's a mess. They knock on your door and they go, um, I own your property, and now you got to fight to defend that. And that's all because we didn't identify all of the heirs that were out there. Mm-hmm. If you miss an heir, that heir has a 25% ownership of that property if there's four of them. And that's not so much trust, that's more of the... The disease part you're talking right. about. Um, trust right. is a tiny bit different in how it works, but that that's a huge thing when it yeah. comes to, you know, naming heirs and legacies of... It's so big, disease. and that's, I mean, that's something that we do. That's part of what we do. That's part of the risk and liability that we take on on your behalf to show you that, hey, we've done this. We've gone through all this research and done all the digging to find out that who is selling you the property is the correct person, and there's mm-hmm. nobody else behind them that's going to come out. Remember with title insurance, you pay it one time, and it covers from that day back. It's not like any other insurance that you've ever had that covers you for all the events that will happen forward. Nope. We don't care about what happens ahead of you. But we have a question from the back. Brittany, what do you got? Okay, so like you said, there's multiple children, parents die. Right. And um, say 
It was missed on title. The property is sold. The new seller has it. Or the you know, new buyer has it. Right. This kid comes back. Can they still come after the yes. property? Yep. They have a 25% ownership if in that kids. property. If yeah, if it's four, four kids, kids. they have a 25% ownership. Yeah, if it's two kids, they have 50%. Mm-hmm. So if you've left out one of those heirs and just negated them because you have a riff with them, that's not okay in the title world. Nope. In the title world, we want to identify all the parties that have a right to that property. And little Tommy, who lives in New Mexico that nobody cares about, goes, wait, you sold mom and dad's property? Wait, wh- where's? I didn't get paid for it. Yep. Now he's upset. Oh, okay, well, wait a minute. He contacts his attorney and said, they did this. His attorney goes, they didn't contact you? Yay, let's go get the property. Game on. Yep. Now they come back and get your $400,000 property. Tommy is a winner. Yep. Yes. And that's scary. That's why... Um, there's a title exception that's like the heirs and legacies of the deceased party. Right. Because we we say on title, like, it is the attorney's job to tell us every person that has a beneficial interest in that house. Well, even further, we ask for we ask oh, for the affidavit the, of heirship. The affidavit of heirship. Which is yep. saying that you're, you're telling us that the people named in that affidavit are the only parties that are entitled to any percentage ownership in these properties. And that's if how you we leave somebody protected. off, now, you, now you've committed fraud. I mean, and that's all, not on right. us. As I mean, yes. As much as I said. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes, it's not us. The claim still happens, but then we go through the process and trying to, you know, piecemeal this out and go, yeah, but they signed this or they did that. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, now that clears up that process. Correct. However, we're still in it. Correct. And, and we'll be out of it quickly. But we're still in it, Dragged so into it we want to try to avoid that as much as it's possible. It's scary. Like, but, there's, there's yeah. any time I see a deceased party, if... These are the big ones. I mean, that, you know, so so again, you know, re, revisiting these, these are reasons why you want to have the title insurance. The three biggies are the heirs in the public records, okay, heirs, E-R-R-O-R-S. Yes. And then you've got the... Um, Other heirs. The liens, the liens and judgments. That's, that's big. I mean, if I'm going to prioritize these... I'm going to say the, the invalid one. deeds, okay, is one. The liens and judgments is two. Mm-hmm. And then the heirs and public records is three. Because that's typically how they are, are handled and dealt with in the in the world it's that a, we deal in. What we do is, it's scary. It's not... And, and you don't you don't recognize it no. until you have to. Or until right? you have a screw up. Right. That's when you recognize it. What I'm going to talk about. Which is a perfect segue into what you're going to talk about. I am going to talk about my first uh-oh as a title examiner. Um, oh, I remember it like it was yesterday. I do too. I mean, you the tears that you brought in were... were Dude, were I felt like such yeah. dog poo. Yeah. But okay, go ahead, so, tell um, So I started in this title company as a as a policy department person. You did. Um. So that means the last step when you buy a house is getting the policy. So... Mm-hmm. Um, so first you come in with this contract, or an attorney comes up with a contract, says, hey, guess what? Like, we're, we're selling this house, or we're buying this house. So I say, great. So Drew put together the title. We went, th- usually, this is when I first started, go through the entire closing. I get the package, and then I get to issue policy. Awesome. It was great for the first, you know, six months <laughs> until you actually made me. He's like, okay, I think you got this policy thing down. Let's, let's get you going to title. I said, okay, I have no idea what that means. So then, you know, you go through the process of every time you run a title, the first thing you always put on title is taxes because that is usually what could, pardon my language, screw people over yes. real bad. Um, yes. Like when there's delinquent taxes, when there's taxes that were paid for by a tax buyer, like that's huge. I feel like a lot of people could lose their houses or lose their oh, yeah. interest. In, um, and that's happened. It has. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the second thing we always raise on title is mortgages because that's the second biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Is there one open mortgage, two open mortgages? How, like, what do we have to take care of before this closing happens? Sure. So there was this one property with an attorney that we used to work with a lot, mm-hmm. an attorney agent. And um, this lady was selling this house. I, I, it's crazy how it just, like, comes back. This lady was... You'll never forget I, the accidents and mistakes you make because you learn from them. And, oh, my and, God. The, you know, so it, 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 I, I mean, I, I get it. We, yeah. I've been there. Yeah, it was. Um, so this lady was selling the house for her mom who had passed away. And so no one had lived in this property for years. So it had racked up a bunch of uh, weed cutting liens mm-hmm. there. So what those mean is, uh, is the village that you're living in has every right to put liens against your house that need to get pat- pat- satisfied. 
That means paid or yeah. satisfied. Yeah, paid satisfied. or satisfied um, yeah, that works. during closing. And like Drew said, people will find their way to make their money some way or another. So this village will just drive around. They'll see houses that um, have long grass and they'll they'll put a little weed cutting lane right on. against their against their property. Usually not a ton of money, usually around eight to twelve hundred dollars, but it's it's money. Eight it's, to twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. For cutting of the lawn. Yes. Which toss you and, thirty or fifty dollars to the neighbor down the street. Yes. And this one had probably six six judgments on there. Mm-hmm. Um so these judgments I'm sorry. So the it was a weed cutting lien that was actually a judgment. That went to judgment. Mm-hmm. So that means that these liens that you can get against your houses, they last for two years mm-hmm. when it's like a mechanics lien. So say I got my roof fixed, but I didn't pay somebody the, the roof 10 roof grand roof. I owed them. Right. Mm-hmm. They put a mechanics lien on my house for $10,000, and then they can either choose to foreclose on that lien and right. take it to court, or after the two years, the time's up and it's... Unless they... So they have to... <laughs> They have to do something with it. Correct. They have to either foreclose on it. They have to renew it. Renew it. They have to do something with that lien. Yes. If after two years they've done nothing with it, it would be out on time. That doesn't mean that they can't reinstate it at a later date. However, the likelihood becomes a little bit less. And I will, I have a huge problem with, because of this one that I missed, I raised You're shy. It. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely shy about it. I am. So, um, so we went through this closing. This closing happened. I completely just biffed on putting this on title mm-hmm. because there was six of them. I put five on title, and a couple months later, um, the attorney from the other side reached out and said, "Like, hey, bud, like, we're luck- selling this property. Yeah, that, luckily you, you were know. on good terms with him. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, so we were selling this property, and you know, I ran the search through a different title company, um, and they came back with this lien. I was like, what? <laughs> And I said, I did the same thing. I'm like, Amy did not miss that lien. There's no way. And so what I did is I went through the file and I was like, I I effed up. Like, I completely missed it. I So Drew, instead of, you know, he, he saw that as a we screwed up. So he's like, you know what, man? Don't worry about it. I'm going to pay for it. And we're going to get this lien removed. And, you know, we'll, we'll send you the release to show it's been satisfied. Um, so that was, that was my one... Right. Knock on wood, my one biggest mistake that I've made thus far. So, it was huge to me, though. I think it, it was, was like... twelve or $1,300, right? It was 1256 She remembers it like that. <laughs> it, it was twelve fifty six. And the reality was that if we didn't... I mean, certainly the first option is deal with it because mm-hmm. it was our mistake. If I, if I f- decided to fight that for whatever reason or maybe had reason to think that it was paid... Then that attorney goes ahead and, and reaches out to the underwriter, which is First American or Fidelity, and they <laughs> determine whether or not uh, it's a valid claim, mm-hmm. which in this case it would be because in this it's one never we raised, knew it was because and I... they're going to come back and go um, pay it. Like yeah. what, what? What's the point? I mean, if they pay it, they're going to seek it from us. So right. either way, we were going we to do take it. Care of it. So instead of it going into my claim blemish column. It was just easier to go, all right, let's just kind of wash our hands of this and, and, and step in and take care of this. Um, understood that mis- mistakes are made and, and things, but I'll tell you that that was probably one of the best learning experiences for you, and it's something that you're very conscious of, but that happens. And, it does, and now um, I made those stupid stupid sheets that... Right. I, I just, I'm a firm believer that anytime I make a mistake, I need to learn from it and grow from it. And, and you do. What else, what could I do now so I don't do that again? Right, right. We've all been there. I mean, yeah. this is not, you know, I mean, in my early years of doing it, you know, I, I've I've done it as well. It's, you know, especially when there's multiple and they're by the same entity who's doing the leaning, which is the village in this case, and, right? Yeah. So you go, well, I read that one. And, or, and the amounts are the same. I yeah. read that one already. It's yeah. easy to just push them off. But it's it's just, it's, and, and when you're busy and all these other things, factors go in there, this is the time mistakes happen. And that's just, but, you know, it's part of that. I, being busy is never an excuse. No, sorry, I, 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 had to, I, I had to segue that because I agree. Hearing I that, I agree. So, but no, also that a, was my. It's a it's a good and it's story. It's hard. It's it, hard to. But it's a know. good story of reality. Yeah. I mean, it's it's realistic. So here comes the last story for us, to, and then we will move on to fun. So we have a client who is relocating to a small community to uh, in New Orleans, and he's seeking a loan. All right, but the FHA government agency told the closing attorney that the loan would be okayed 
if he would put prove satisfactory chain of title, which is the history of title, um, onto the real estate. Since the Louisiana uh, research folks wasn't automated, it took a long time to get this abstract title done, and it only dated back to 1803. Only. So after <laughs> sending the loan request and title information to the, uh, to the lender, the lender uh, replied like this. Upon review, your client's loan application, we note that the request is supported by an abstract title, also known as a search, which we complement the able manner in which you have prepared and presented the title chain. It's a lot of big words. We must point out that you have only cleared title of the subject property back to 1803. Before final approval, please provide clear title back to its origin. That's insanity. Right? That's now. You Okay. BT Dubs, yep. usually lenders ask for a 24- or 48-month chain of title. They want to just think all the way back to the time, which is a, a full search. It that go back is 100 like years. a f- it, But that's it, more than a full search. Right, exactly. That's like exactly. Stone so age. the attorney, who's now at this point annoyed, writes a letter that says this is the actual letter. Your letter, your letter regarding title in case number such and such has been received. I note that you wish to have a title abstract extended further than 194 years covered by the present application. I was unaware that any educated person in this country, particularly those working in a property area, would not know that Louisiana was purchased by the U.S. from France in 1803. (laughs) The year of origin identified in our application. For the edification of uninformed FHA bureaucrats, such as yourselves, the title to the land prior to the U.S. ownership was obtained from France, which had acquired it by right of conquest from Spain. <laughs> the land came into possession of Spain by right of discovery made in the year 1492 so by a sea captain named Christopher Columbus, <laughs> who had been granted the privilege of seeking a new route to India by then reigning monarch Isabella. The good queen, who was a <laughs> pious woman, and careful about titles, almost as much as the FHA, <laughs> took the precaution of securing the blessing of the Pope before she <laughs> sold her jewels to fund Columbus's expedition. Now, the Pope, as I'm sure you know, is the missionary of <clears throat> Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and God is commonly accepted creator of this world. <laughs> Therefore, I believe it is safe to presume that he also made the part of the world called Louisiana. He therefore would be the owner of origin. I hope you find his original claim to be satisfactory. Now, can we get our damn loan? That's exactly the letter Dude, from the that attorney. Is, that was the att- uh, an attorney wrote yep, that letter? Yep, basically the Louisiana Purchase was defined because the FHA, a lender, was going, no, we needed to go back further. That is a freaking lender of the outstanding. US. I thought that was amusing. I thought that is wonderful. And that you have concluded our wonderful segment that was of good. title talking and sharing some information about some stories and horror stories and nightmares um, <laughs> or <wrong>. things <laughs> that happen in, in our business, and, and hopefully that helps you guys out. So, bam. I like that, that attorney. I wish yeah, I could yeah we'd his... like to get him up here in our area and, and see if we can have him work out with us. I do. What is your fun All right, my quote of the day is, if you set your goals ridiculously high and it's a failure, you will fail above everybody else's success. That is, I, I really, really love hearing you, you know, talk these quotes out because if you go back to the last few weeks of your quote, they've been really about goal orientation and, and drive and motivation, which is really inspiring for, for me as your mentor to watch you grow and then watch what you're going to do with Brittany and and how you're going to grow like there's nothing more enjoyable for a mentor to watch the one you've mentored grow and flourish to mentoring others so I that's great thank you I appreciate that thank you your your growth and 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 I'm so excited for you we we just made the big announcement that um, Amy is now the running individual of the title company she is the uh, she's been given the responsibility of running the title company as I'm puked. moving on and going into <laughs> some other things. Doesn't mean I'm disconnecting with it. Doesn't mean I'm not still involved with it. It just means that 
she's been given a little bit more responsibility, or I guess should we say a lot more responsibility, to to really steer this thing and take this into the direction that has been the vision of myself, which has been really conveyed to her. So I'm I'm thankful for that. And I'm, I'm I'm proud of her and and her growth and, and all that she's done. Um, so uh, if you want to support a a great cause and a great team, Amy's your person to talk to. Uh, she's she's amazing, and the the team that she's got behind her. I'm I'm proud of uh, all of that and, and yeah, how that's absolutely. all been organized. So, and on that note, here is mine. Um, this this is so deep and, and meaningful to me that um, whenever I hear somebody sigh and say, "Man, life is hard," I always want to ask them, compared to what? Life is hard. Yeah, it is. But compared to what? What else do you know? So as hard as it is, it's a lot of what you make of it, too. And, and as Amy alluded to, I've been you know, kind of on this roller coaster of up and down and, and struggles. But at the end of the day, when you look at what you have and the look at where you're at, everything you have is what you're supposed to have. Everything that's happened is what's supposed to happen. And why don't you just embrace and cherish what you have right now and work hard to better those situations and opportunities so you can have those things that you feel you need or you want, they're not just given and handed. They're earned. So I think that's something to, yeah, to work and strive for. Absolutely. So uh, this has been Title Talk, ladies and gentlemen. We are your title company that cares. My name is Drew. And my name is Amy. We thank you guys so much for listening and joining. And uh, until next week, have a great week. Thank Take you. care, everybody. Bye. Well, there you have it. That is it for this week's edition of Title Talk. Be sure to head over to our inspired YouTube page and subscribe and like. And make sure you follow the team on Instagram and Facebook. Join us again next time for more tips and knowledge from the industry pros. Thanks again for listening.